guys, Demeter 1, 2, and 2, and welcome to part 2 of my, uh, unbeknownst to me, apparently pissing everyone off in the, in the community series. You say one card might perhaps be a necessary evil for the game to survive and all of a sudden everyone's up in arms against you. Oh, for any of the newcomers, I do beg you, remember, my tagline is to troll the meta. So, you need to take everything I say with a grain of salt. I, I revel in taking devil's advocate opinions because they are just far too much more fun. And ooh, today we got a doozy! Prepare to get real mad! It was proposed to me the other day that it was quite odd as a player of the game, I would care about Konami's bottom line. Yes, why as a player would I have any business at all giving a damn whether or not this game is profitable for the company that owns it? Well, my hypothesis for this whole thing, I'm gonna do this nice and concise and clean because I'm actually not drunk like I was last video. <laughs> I had a bad day, my roommate gave me a glass of wine, I filmed a video. That was objectively a bad idea, I'll give you guys that one. My hypothesis is Konami follows the money. In order to prove this, I need to make at least one straw man argument, which is great, and that is Firewall Dragon sells product. Now, you could probably say that that is the weakest part of this whole thing, and honestly, you could replace this with any power card, because power cards sell product. Card sets that have good cards in them tend to sell better than card sets that have bad cards in them. Like, Battle Pack 3, Monster League, fun set. It's a hoot to play in a sealed tournament, but it's a terrible set from a competitive standpoint. There's like nothing in it. It's Digusto Emerald and that's about it. So it didn't sell well. There's a reason why all those like Walmart cube things always have a bunch of battle packs in them because they have a bunch lying around because I could never sell them. Good cards tend to sell, which was kind of what I was trying to get at last time. But yeah, let's, let's keep going. Let's keep, let's keep it rolling. This is going to be two parts. Number one, the differences between the concerns of a player and that of the company. And two is uh, why I, as a player, think I should care as an evidence for it. Part one. Let's do it. As a player of this game, my primary concern when looking at new cards or building a deck is, do I enjoy playing this? Is this fun? And will it win if I bring it to a regionals or maybe just like a locals or whatever, depending on what, what, what I'm expecting myself to do. Most of the time when I pick up a rogue deck or even a meta deck for that matter, I my first thought is, is it fun? Do I enjoy playing it? I played Necros and Spirals after the fact because they were cheaper at that point and I just, I don't know, I like I don't like playing the deck everyone else is playing. It just, I don't like mirror matches. It, they wig me out for some reason. That That's a that's a Dave thing though. I, ignore that. Because I actually enjoy those two decks, I enjoy their play style. They're actually fun for me. That's completely subjective opinion. I enjoy them. And whether or not they can win is the other thing I tend to think about. When I pick a rogue deck, I think, do I like it? And does it have a shot at winning a tournament? Because uh, there's a ton of them that I have fun with, like Spirits. I love Spirits. That's a fun deck. I topped a, a, my like one of my first locals when I started getting back into the game with Spirits. It was like, Nikitama Eritama make Lavalval Chain top deck. Uh, uh, BLS, and then Nikitama would draw the BLS, and it was it was good. I loved that that wombo combo. It was fun. However, nowadays, well, besides the fact that you have all Volvo chains banned, but it wouldn't do very well because at best, spirits are a mediocre rank four spam. When we have other decks like S Knights, which do that better, they're not even relevant. <laughs> And then it all culminates with Zoo being the best Exceed deck because it only requires one material to make its extra deck. So, you know, that's power power creep and, and such. But yeah, those are my concerns as a player. Is it fun and can it win? Uh, resale value, maybe sometimes. Uh, collector's value, if it's like a cool thing. Like my, my Pharaoh Servant Jinzo. Jinzo's not the greatest card in the world, but I think he's cool. Uh, so there's a collector thing there but most of the time it's is it fun can it win and then let's let's jump into the shoes of konami what are their major concerns well uh in the next part i will give evidence for this however as a company as a business it would be at least good enough odds to hedge your bets that their main concern is making money 
health of the game, happiness of the player base, all come secondary to whether or not they're making those dividends. This is extremely important to any business, trust me. I've talked to the CEO of the company I work for on many occasions and his driving force is the company's bottom line. It doesn't matter, it's really that. Because as long as that is a positive, then we all have jobs and the company doors stay open. That's pretty much it. Everything else comes secondary to that, and that makes total sense when you're running a business because simply, uh, if the business doesn't exist, all that other stuff can't happen. Health of the game doesn't happen. New product doesn't happen. The player base uh, ceases to exist, all because the game ceases to exist. So obviously you can tell that between us, the players, and Konami, the company, there is a distinct, there is a distinct uh, disparity between what they want and what we want. So why now would we, as the player base, want to care about what Konami wants, and which is presumably mostly just their bottom line? Because Konami follows the money! Because why would they do anything else? And my evidence for whether or not they follow the money is to look at our precious fake Yu-Gi-Oh! app, Duel Links. Duel Links is a hoot. It's a lot of fun. The hand-picked choice cards for every set, uh, seemingly omitting broke cards making more weirder decks viable certainly gives you a great cool uh diverse meta as well as making certain decks like vampires and fur hires giving their uh giving them their their chance to shine and otherwise they would never have been able to top anything and the truncated rules means that even like players who haven't played since they were kids or even people who have never played Yu-Gi-Oh before can get back into it dual links my opinion has been growing of it ever since I first started playing. It gets better and better. It's actually, it's actually a lot of fun. But uh, that's not what Konami cares about. They care about the fact that the amount of people downloading that game is absolutely absurd. It's in the millions upon this point, and it, it's way, way far beyond the amount of TCG and OCG players combined who are actually currently playing this game and actively buying products. So yes, the mobile users way, way outweigh us as physical IRL Yu-Gi-Oh players. And this shows all the Yu-Gi-Oh tubers, or Yu-Gi-Oh tubers, Yu-Gi tubers, this is my first time in a video, who do dual links exclusively get these weird gift boxes all the time and then us regular Yugi tubers only a couple of us got those things and when we opened them we couldn't figure out what they were they were full of a bunch of weird like bad packs and a dual links card and some swag and like, it didn't make any sense to anybody who were opening them and everyone was really confused unless you look at this from the fact that konami is really really following the money they are following dual links they are promoting dual links they are hard promoting Duel Links because it's making them money. If anything, they're trying to use Duel Links to bring more players into IRL to make printing all those stupid cards on cardboard more economically viable. Why else would we get a set like Dark Saviors which has one meta deck in it and then two decks that are completely garbage? I love vampires. That new vampire deck is really cool, but it's really bad. For hires, again, really cool, but they kinda stink. Unless you stick them in Duel Links and then they're just OP and they're the two best decks, or one is the best deck, one was the best deck because they got hit on the band. You know what I mean. If anything, Dark Saviors was more of a Duel Links promotional set than it was a TCG booster set. Yeah, they threw us competitive players a bone with Engage, but they also gave all the casual players two archetypes to play with so they can be like, oh wow, those didn't do very good at locals, but hey, if you really want to play those those two decks, just come to Duel Links. Just, they actually work here. But not only that, we have those speed duels coming down the, 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 the pipe, and those are literally just IRL Duel Links. Like, the rules are, this, are pretty much the same and everything. You have the character powers and half the deck and the half the light points and the field is smaller. It's Duel Links. Konami is following the money. So now that we've established that Konami follows the money and that I should be concerned about that, we have not yet to establish as to why I should be concerned about that. It mostly comes down to the fact that as a player, I am worried that Konami is so focused on Duel Links and not focused on the TCG. 
Think about it. Besides the 200th YCS, there's been a lot of lackluster anything for TCG support. Uh, they're constantly dogging on the ban list. You know, objectively speaking, we have some problems in the current format that need to be addressed, whether it's Firewall Dragon or the thing that Firewall Dragon is looping. You know, either one's a viable target for the ban list. Doesn't matter which, one of them needs to happen. And yet, nah, who cares? In no rush, no one plays the card game anyway. Have you ever seen Konami's YouTube channel that Jerome runs? It's like super low budget. It's disconcerting. The more and more money that Konami dumps into Duel Links, and the less and less attention it seems to pay to the real life TCG, makes us worry that maybe perhaps this shift towards Duel Links will eventually phase out our beloved card game. I do not like the rampant power creep and the wombo combo FTK decks that are running rampant right now. It makes for a very bad format, and it's not fun. Trust me. However, I think what I was trying to get across in the last video in my uh, less than ideal mental condition was that I don't care how degenerate Firewall Dragon is. If you people are buying tins and packs that he supports, it keeps our game alive. I don't care how degenerate and crappy and bad the format is, I would rather have that than no Yu-Gi-Oh at all. Because think about it, if Konami just decides to one day stop printing and supporting the TCG and completely moves over to Duel Links, then yeah, we're in some bad state. We no longer have new packs, we no longer get a ban list. The format is now stagnant, we no longer get official sanctioned events catered by Konami, so now it's completely up to ARG to hold YCSs, which they obviously wouldn't because the game is dead. And how long do you think the casual player base could sustain the game on life support when it no longer has any new products coming in, or any new ban list, or the Konami's even acknowledging that it exists? That would be the end-all be-all worst thing to ever happen. Yes, I would love the game to be more balanced and I would love it to actually be more inviting to the players and less just about how much can we sell with the next set and therefore that's what we're going to use the ban list to do because obviously that's what the ban list is now for. It's not to balance the game, it's to sell product. Otherwise, we would still have Stratos banned. But no, we had to sell that hero box. As you can see, Konami follows the money. They don't care about the game, and it's really, really sad. They only care about it enough that uh, it doesn't matter how broken it is, if, as long as we're still buying product. So uh, if we stop doing that as some sort of boycott for them to, you know, fix our game, they're just going to simply stop printing it. And that is, that is the worst kind of suck. So no, I don't like where the format is. I just see it as the lesser of two evils. And I hate that. Welcome in my kingdom.